Welcome to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. I'm Linda Karnauskas, and we want to thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, April 13th. We have an informative show for you today. First, we're going to be talking with Officer Christian Berg from the Oatana Police Department. We're going to be getting an update and also uh, talk about distracted driving. And then later on, we'll be visiting with Linda Hoffman on living well with chronic conditions. Uh, to our Oatana Today Show viewers, we want to welcome your comments, suggestions for show topics or guests. You can contact us via email at oatanatoday at charter.net or by contacting our show's producer, Leanne Alt, at 390-5751. Now, we will take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Officer Christian Berg, so please stay with us. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Oatana Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day, taking pride in our community, listening to what you say, a voice you can talk to. We're growing with you, with you in mind in everything we do. Oatana Public Utilities. Greetings from the Steele County Historical Society. We invite you to visit us and enjoy your county's history at the History Center and Village of Yesteryear. Check our website for current exhibits and monthly programs. Come join the fun at the 30th annual Vegas-themed Fabulous Night and Nights Auction, Saturday, April 16th at St. Mary's School in Oatana. Doors open at 4 p.m. Admission is only $10. Exciting items to bid on in both the live and silent auctions. Be sure to get your car and cash raffle tickets now for a chance to win $10,000 or a 2016 Ford Fusion. Great food and cash bar available. All proceeds benefit the students of St. Mary's School. You don't want to miss this great community event. And remember, Remember, whatever happens at the auction, stays at the auction. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. Thank you for joining us, and we're here with Officer Christian Berg. Good morning, Christian. Morning. And we're so glad to have you. Thank you for having me. And you're from our very own Oatana Police Department. I am. It's so nice of you to offer your services and come educate us, and I think it's going to be on distracted driving. It is, yep. April is our Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Okay. So let's get right into it, I guess. What is distracted driving? Distracted driving is distracted driving. It's not paying attention to what's going on on the roadway, um, not paying attention to your vehicle's speed, uh, pedestrians, uh, lane of travel, um, and it, it causes a great amount of accidents in Minnesota. Okay. Now you've Distractive driving is something that's in the news now. It's coming. They're realizing how all of these things happening behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably been going on for some time now. How long have you been an officer here with Oatana? Um, I joined the Oatana Police Department in 2011. Okay. So have you seen a progression? I have with the transition from everyone moving from dumb phones to smartphones. Um, everyone has a lot more um, web capabilities to use, and unfortunately. Uh, that's caused quite a distraction when they're driving as they're accessing Facebook and social media. Mm -hmm. And I noticed when GPSs first came out, there wasn't this big, even though those can be distracting as well, yep. GPSs were the big thing on the market, but now these phones are doing, doing everything. Yep. So we're multitasking even more. They do. Um, I remember when they back first came out, um, they're probably about the size of a small television set, and they were um, pretty handy. You could mount them in your vehicle. Um, and they were large and clunky, and we ran into um, issues with people being distracted by those when driving, um, as well as them blocking um, the view of the roadway. Um, now that we've progressed and technology is a little bit better in 2016, uh, everything has become more web-based platforms. Now with the smartphones, you can access uh, maps and stuff or GPS, and people mount that on their windshields um, and use that to navigate as they're driving out of town or unfamiliar mm -hmm. places. Um, unfortunately, um, we've gone, well, fortunately, we've gone from the large little television sets now to these slim smartphones, um, but we still have people that are mounting them 
um, which would cause a distraction to the driver. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that, you know, a cell phone is, well, nowadays they're quite larger, mm -hmm. but, you know, if it gives you a three inch by six inch gap, it's three inch by six inch, but if you move that further out down the road, it becomes a larger view. So it's gonna block your view of the roadway, other vehicles, pedestrians, things like that. Okay. Now you're an officer and you, you also, um, you cruise, you, you're in a car and you go around town. I and, cruise, yes. And you make, sure, <laughs> you make sure that we're safe and I keep, your eye, on, keep yep. your eye on the prize, so to speak, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, well, great. And are, you're involved in the community, obviously. Yep. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with the with the viewers about yourself before we get further into the interview? Um, worked, uh, well, I started my career in 2008 in okay. the state of Minnesota. I worked for communities of Wasika and Wilmer. Um, like I said, in 2011, I came back to Owatonna. Um, that's really where my heart is. It's where I'm born and raised. Um, okay. The more, majority of my family resides in Steele County. So you've been an officer for a while, and you have seen a progression with devices behind the wheel. Yes. Okay. Could you tell me, what is the leading cause of crashes here? The leading cause of uh, distraction in Minnesota is why we're here is it's distracted driving. Okay. Um, April is distracted driving. We have a lot of people that text behind the wheel, and that causes a great deal of accidents, Linda. Okay. What are some of the myths about uh, multitasking? What are some of the myths about distracted driving? Um, that uh, you, you're going to be able to have a picture of the road and be able to look down to do something on your phone while you're traveling 55 miles, on, 55 miles an hour down the roadway mm -hmm. um, and think that just for that quick second of looking down, looking back up, traffic is going to still be left in that position uh, where you're at. And mm -hmm. That's a myth. Mm -hmm. um, traveling at 55 miles an hour, you look down for a second, you look back up, you travel the distance of a football field. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know that a lot can change in that amount of distance and that amount of time. Okay. Um, we talked a lot about... Uh, texting and using our phones, but that's, is that the only uh, means of, of distracted driving? What are some other things that you'd consider distracted driving? Anything that would take your attention off the roadway. So I know that we've all seen it. Um, driving down the road, you've seen people texting and driving, which is really frustrating. Um, you see people who think that they can manage the monster burger and drive with their knees down the road. <laughs> um, you see people who have small lap dogs who like to sit up on the driver's lap, look out the window, look out the driver's window. Um, it just, whatever takes your attention away from the roadway is have you, unsafe. Have you seen much makeup, uh, putting on mascara in the rearview mirror? You name it, I think <laughs> maybe I've seen it so far. A lot of people um, reading novels at stop signs. <laughs> I've, I've seen reading a book as you're driving down the road. I don't know how you manage and read a book as you're driving down the road. <laughs> and as a passenger, how can, as a passenger, what is our responsibility with distractive driving? Your responsibility as a passenger, if, you're, if the driver's distracted, is just to speak up. Say something to the driver, don't wait. If the driver's going down the road and they are preoccupied with tuning in on the music, um, getting on their phone to check who liked their status or who poked them on Facebook, who posted the nudist, you know, they're just not paying attention to the road. That's gonna put everyone in, in harm's way. That puts the passengers in harm's way, the driver, any other vehicles traveling around them or pedestrians. Mm -hmm. So I would say that your responsibility is to speak up and say something. Say, put the phone down, just drive down the road. And maybe being a passenger wouldn't, would be not talking too much. Or, you know, you wouldn't want to tell them the funniest joke they ever heard while you're going down I-35 at 70 miles an hour, right? Correct, correct. <laughs> so you probably, as a passenger, you wouldn't want to distract. Right, right. Let the driver pay attention to what's going on. There's a lot of different tasks you're doing as you're driving. As we all know, going through driver's ed, you're paying attention, hands 10 and 2, you're watching the road, you're scanning, you're checking your mirrors, you're watching for other traffic, and as you're doing that, it takes the, the attention away. The key word would be we need to drive defensively. Correct. At all times, I would Correct. think. Correct. Defensively and not offensively. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, could you please explain what the, um, how you're going to manage this, how we're gonna, you're going to patrol this issue? Sure. So April's our driving, uh, Distracted Driving Awareness Month, and we will be out on the roads pro um, providing extra enforcement. That's with the Minnesota State Patrol, the Steele County Sheriff's Office, the Blooming Prairie Police Department, the Owatonna Police Department, as well as many other law enforcement agencies, about 300 law enforcement agencies around the state. Um, how we manage that is through overtime shifts, and the, the overtime shifts, the money provided from that is directly from the National Highway Traffic Administration, Safety Administration, which is then funneled down through the Office of Traffic Safety and then to participating law enforcement agencies. So the state is giving us extra money to be on the road to just enforce distracted driving. 
Okay. So I'm I'm calling Aunt Mabel. I'm on the phone and I got to check up on my Aunt Mabel and okay. I'm at the stop sign and I and I look up and there you are. We're eye to eye. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm I'm this is it. You, you know, you just what's going to happen? You catch me on my cell phone and you're you're such a nice officer. Thank you. What's going to happen? <laughs> what's going to happen? Um we're going to make a traffic stop and make an investigatory stop. Um it's it's the common misconception, or maybe we'll go back to the myth that hey, if I'm going to text and if I do one of these numbers where I keep the phone in my lap and look up at a stop sign, um, maybe, hey, maybe that cop over there isn't going to pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, we see it. We know you're on your phone. We know you're distracted. Just pay attention. If we catch you on your phone, we're going to pull you over. We're going to have a discussion, um, and part of that discussion may result in you getting a citation. Um, and a citation in in Minnesota, your first offense is fifty dollars. Um, that does not include the court fines and fees. Um, your second time, we catch you a second time, and you get a citation. It's two hundred and seventy-five dollars, um, along with court fines and fees. So this is this is serious. The first it's, time, it might you might pull over. Hey, you know, Linda, put yep. down the phone. We care about you. Right. And you you mark me down as a warning. Right. But then now, if I'm stopped again for it. I'm in the computer as a warning, correct? We, we have that all recorded. So, Linda, if we stopped you before and we said, hey, I stopped this vehicle and I warned Linda for operating her phone or accessing the web on her phone while driving, um, all that is recorded. So maybe the next officer in the county who stops you, maybe they'll pull history and say, well, you know, Linda's been stopped by the Oatana Police Department before. They've had a conversation with her about texting while driving. Obviously, it didn't connect, so they're going to write you a citation. Mm -hmm. And another thing to go back to citations is people don't understand that if you are texting while driving and that is the cause of the accident, it can be proved, that's a gross misdemeanor and you have the possibility of facing jail time if you're texting and you cause an accident. This is serious business. It is, it is. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people brush it off as kind of a lighthearted thing, but if you're on your phone, you're distracted uh, and you're driving, it can really hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, s the same thing if I'm shoving a hot dog in my mouth and I'm at the four-way and you catch me. You know, you're gonna. You might pull me over and say, "Hey, you know." Right. Yep. I mean, yeah. like we said before, yeah. you're trying to manage the monster burger, and you're yeah. driving down the road. You dog, using yeah. your knees. Yep. It's yeah. obviously you're you're not paying attention to what's going on the road. Right. And all the evidence is there. <laughs> the evidence, yeah, will be all over your shirt. What should we do if we see distracted driving? If you see question. distracted driving, very good question. Um, you can call the law enforcement center. The non-emergency number is 507-451-8232. That number goes directly to dispatch if you're in the city of Oatana. Um, a lot of the information we're gonna wanna know is the make and model, color of the vehicle, license plate if you can get it, and description of the driver, um, and the offense in which you're observing. Okay. And that's the big thing. And if we can get that information and we can get a stop on a vehicle, um, just to make sure that they're safe and prevent any accidents from happening is and really the, what we want to and do. And that information would be confidential? Right, yep. If you do not want to provide your information, you can always call that in as a, an anonymous okay. driving appointment. And then just real quick, we're running out of time, but where would you put, if you had to have a GPS or your phone have these apps with a GPS, where would yep. be the safest place to put that? GPS, lower left-hand corner, out of the view of the driver. Okay. Well, thank you, Christian. It's thank been you. very informative, and thank you for keeping us safe. Anytime. Okay. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Linda Hoffman and Living Well with Chronic Conditions. Please stay with us. Come out to Spare Time Entertainment on Saturday, April 16th for Bowl for Kids Sake to benefit Big Brothers Big Sisters of Southern Minnesota. Start today by forming a team, collecting pledges, and bowling for kids in your community. Call 451-5922 for more information or go directly to our website to set up your online fundraising page. Help change the lives of local children. Raise some money and join us for a great time on Saturday, April 16th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. for Bowl for Kids Sake. See you there. Looking for that perfect birthday party idea for your child? I have exactly what you're looking for, a pool or gym party at the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center. 
Hi, this is Brad. Contact me today at 774-7102 to schedule the party every child will love. Birthday party packages are available year round. West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center, encouraging and promoting a healthy lifestyle. Hello, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Michael Mager with the Brick Mager Funeral Home and the Medford Funeral Home. At Brick Mager, we are privileged to have served the families of Steele County community for 118 years. Whether you choose traditional burial or cremation, we promise the tribute your loved one deserves with the peace of mind that you require. We are proud to be part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm David Einhaus with the Owatonna Foundation. Thank you to all of our donors who have helped make Owatonna a better place to live. Will you join us today with a financial gift? Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. And we're here visiting with Linda Hoffman. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. And you're the manager at the Courage Kenny and the Penny uh, George Center, correct? That's Would right. you explain to our viewers a little bit about that uh, arrangement and who you are and how long you've been involved? Mm, okay, I've been at Owatonna Hospital for about 17 years, managing the uh, rehab department, which is now called Courage Kenny Rehabilitation Institute because the Sister Kenny group merged with Courage Center a couple of years ago. And so that's when we have our name changed. So we have physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, cardiac rehab, uh, senior wellness program, sports medicine, what am I forgetting, industrial rehab. So we have a pretty broad range there. And then the Penny George Institute for Health and Healing just opened about a year ago, just just about exactly a year ago now, and we offer, excuse me, acupuncture and medical massage therapy in that space. So a lot of it sounds preventative as well. Yes, yes. Hopefully, uh, we're out there to help keep people healthy. Yeah, things they can do, mm -hmm. which leads us to the, a chronic condition. Um, even though you have a chronic condition, most of us that have a chronic condition are probably still in good health, mm -hmm. but need management with it. And what provoked the, you all to want to do a class on living well with chronic conditions? Well, the Southeast Minnesota Area Agency on Aging promotes uh, evidence-based programs in the community, and they were offering a grant to get started to offer living well with chronic conditions. And so we took them up on it and have been doing it now for a couple of years. And um, the... Um, we do six, six uh, weeks, two and a half hours a week, and folks come and learn all sorts of different tools and techniques for managing whatever their specific situations are. <clears throat> Everything from uh, diet, exercise, stress management, talking with um, healthcare professionals and so forth. And um, it just seemed like a good fit with everything else that we do, you know, as far as improving the health of the community. Mm -hmm. Now, to show that this does, does work, uh, you have researched some research that was done, correct? The whole program was developed by Stanford University in about 1991. They started a five-year um, uh, study. They, well, over a thousand people participated in the randomized controlled study. And out of that, they developed this program. And so um, even after the um, program was finished and what they're finding even now as they look at uh, outcomes with people from the program, um, that people have significant improvements in the exercise, cognitive symptom management, communication with physicians, self-reports of general health, uh, better health, less health distress, uh, better fatigue, less disability, and improved social activities and their and performance of their roles, and fewer hospitalizations, fewer days in the hospital. 
And these uh, results, many of them persist for even as long as three years after participating in the course. Mm -hmm. So the course itself is, uh, if you look it up on Stanford University's website, it's CDSMP, which stands for Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, which pretty much says it all. Um, and, then, and you can read all about all the, the details of the study if you just uh, Google CDSMP. Lots of the, prog the programs are offered internationally, and um, each area tends to give it their own little name. So in our region, it's called Living Well with Chronic Conditions. Okay. And this information is taken for the class, this information for the class is taken, is scripted. It is because it's an evidence-based program. If, if you want to say you're doing Living Well with Chronic Conditions, you need to be following the script. I mean, it isn't like verbatim, but session one in Oatana is going to look pretty much like session one in Faribault, Albert Lee, you know, Boston, wherever it's being conducted, because that's the way they, they, they do insist on having some robust um, adherence to the program itself. So Now you said the, the, the course itself, is there a charge? No, okay. it's free of charge right now. We're kind of covered by a grant from Southeast Minnesota Area Agency on Aging. So people can just sign up to come and they come for, like I say, six weeks. So we have a session starting on Monday night at 5.30, from 5.30 mm -hmm. to 8. We're going to be at Coda Living Center. And so every Monday for six weeks, we have people, they'll be coming there. And uh, the participants, they get a book um, to work with during the class. It's theirs to use for the six-week duration. And then if they decide they want to keep it, they pay us at the end. And that's like $18.95 which is pretty, pretty cheap, mm -hmm. but otherwise no cost at all to participate in the program. So is there an age limit? It no. could be any kind of... Well, we don't. Uh, it's not for children. It's really intended for adults, people that are in a position to make changes in their lifestyle mm -hmm. um, based on you know, the information that they glean. And I should emphasize that one of the most important things about the program is that it's, it's designed to improve the person's self-efficacy, their own ability to take charge. To know how to. Exactly. So a couple of the big things we focus a lot of our attention on are problem solving and action planning. So you can break your big, you know, I want to lose 100 pounds. Well, that's not happening by next week. We're going to be looking at how do you break things down into small, manageable action plans. And every week people have an action plan. They come back and report and learn that way for what your chronic issue is. What your is. issue is. Maybe I'm going to improve my sleep hygiene this week or whatever it is I'm going to work on. So you don't, each week you're not going to do A, this week we're talking about arthritis. B, we're talking about. No, no, no. Okay. Any chronic condition, arthritis, diabetes, mental health issues, whatever it is that's interfering with your full appreciation and participation in your life is perfectly reasonable. And then we have a toolkit that helps manage what we call the symptom cycle. And everyone has these symptoms. You know, they have sleep issues, they have depression, they have pain, they have, you know, whatever the issues are, we have tools that help people manage those, mm -hmm. and that's the purpose of the program. Now you say we. Who is involved with you in the program and will be administering some of these sessions? Mm -hmm. There are three facilitators here in Steele County, myself, uh, Sharon McLean, who is the uh, director of nursing at CODA, and then a community member, Diane Wheeler, is also going to be facilitating our, our classes this year. And we have a bunch of them. And if you um, want to know, they're, they're going to be in April, July, September, and October. So if you think, eh, you know, April's not good for me, July might be better, you know, you okay. can kind of take a look. So this is a continuum. They would come for two and a half or two and a half hours the first time, or two hours to two the class. Two and a half hours for six weeks. And then, so, so then the next week we come back, do we report what we've implemented? Is it a continuum? That's the again? idea. That's You build on the first class, the second class builds on the first class, third on the second, and so forth, so that uh, it all sort of fits together and... Um, yes, it's not just come this week if you want to talk about arthritis. That's, that's okay. not the point. And then when this is all said and done, do you share the results with the Stanford program? Or? We don't. They aren't still collecting that kind of a data, data from us. We do do the kind of evaluation so we can improve our own mm -hmm. delivery of the program. But uh, no, not right now. They're not yeah. still And just quickly go over uh, 
who, what, when, where, and who, what, when, all where. that information? Do they have to register? What? They can call me, 507-977-2171, and, and let me know you're interested, and I'll give you a call back if I'm not answering the phone that particular minute. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be at Coda Living Community, and that's going to be um, starting Monday, April 18th, 530 to 8. Okay. Pleasure, Linda, and thank you for bringing us, t teaching us how to live well. I'm so grateful that you <laughs> let us come and talk about it. Thank you. We will take a quick break to hear a message from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. I'm Deb Gillard. And I'm Sean McNulty with Brookdale Owatonna Assisted Living and Memory Care. Where we provide optimum living activities to keep our residents engaged in life. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. time for community welcome back and it's time for community announcements find out what's going on in our town of Owatonna Express Employment Professional announces its seventh annual refresh leadership simulcast on Wednesday April 13th at the Owatonna Holiday Inn speakers are Marshall Goldsmith Shaquille O'Neal and Kaplan Mowbray register at refreshleadership.com slash live or call Express Employment Professionals at 455-3002 for more information St. Mary's School Night of Nights will be held on Saturday, April 16th at the St. Mary's School Building next to the Sacred Heart Church. Silent auction begins at 4 p.m. and live auction at 7 p.m. Food and cash bar must be 21, and you must be 21 to attend, and their slogan is, what happens there stays there. Uh, we have a Bark and Rec coming up, which is sponsored by Owatonna's Park and Rec, the Steele County Humane Society, Saturday, April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Steele County Fairgrounds at the Four Seasons Center. Bring your furry family member and check out what vendors from our area have to offer. Demonstrations include canine cash from OPD, dog obedience and agility. All dogs attending must have rabies tags or proof of vaccinations and be lists. Leashed. Vendors with pet products and businesses are invited to purchase a booth for $25. Contact Park and Rec at 444-4321. Uh, They're going to have treats, grooming, vets, and other doggy stuff all under one woof. <laughs> okay, and Parks and Rec, your best investment. Uh, Munchkin Market, Saturday, April 23rd, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Four Seasons Center. Uh, youth ages 6 to six to 15 years will have tables selling toys, games, books, sporting goods, and more. You won't want to miss that one. And then we have the 2016 Family Festival, Thursday, April 28th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Willow Creek Intermediate School, 1050 22nd Street Northeast. No registration necessary. This event is free. For more information, call 444-7900 Community Education, Roosevelt Community School. And then coming up here at the end of April, and you'll hear more about this, Good Shepherd Variety Show, Saturday, April 30th at Good Shepherd, 2500 uh, Avenue Northeast, Owatonna. And it's a fundraiser for the gathering area and a hot dog buffet, and we'll get more into that later. Well, we want to thank you for watching the show today, and we hope you'll join us on Friday when our guests will be the Minnesota Extension, and we're going to have Master Gardener Deb Alt. And then also, we will be visiting with Brad Dushaw, who's a, a recreation superintendent here at Parks and Rec, and get the latest update there. So until then, have a great day, and we'll see you on Friday.